Hello everyone, Karen Miller here. I hope you're doing well this new year. Today I'm going to do some black beans. So beans are a major, major source of protein. What I want to do with the beans, when I cook beans, I want to cook sprouted beans. I don't want to cook beans that are not sprouted. I know a lot of people get very gassy when they eat beans and it causes a lot of gas and one of the ways to avoid this is to use beans that are sprouted you see the little sprouts here this took about a day and a half to happen so I soak the beans overnight because the beans have to be damp in order for it to sprout I soaked it overnight and then I strained the water out and covered it and let it sit until it was sprouted. This took quite a while because usually it's done overnight but this took about two days to sprout like this. So this is what I would do from now on when I'm cooking beans. It's all going to be sprouted because number one it's easier to digest because you get more of the protein out of the beans when it's sprouted like that so this is what I'm going to do I'm roasting some guajillo chili to put in the, the beans okay so I washed those and put it on here I'm going to toast it for about five minutes and then I'm going to remove the seeds pour some hot water on it and let it sit for about 15 minutes and then we're going to put this in the food processor with the tomato uh, the plum tomatoes okay for our sauce so and I'm also going to use some epazote and the epazote also helps with the gassiness so if you suffer with with gas or you stop eating beans because of the gassiness of it maybe you can try doing it a different way number one you need to sprout the beans before you cook it and number two, you can try to use the epazote in it. I'm using dried epazote because I couldn't find fresh ones. Epazote is an herb that they use a lot in Mexican cooking. So I removed the chilies from the stove. I'm going to remove the seeds now. And then I'm going to put this in some hot water to steep for 15 minutes get all the flavor out of it and then put it in the food processor with the water that it's been soaking in okay so I'm gonna get all of these seeds out of this I like guajillo chilies. It has a fruitiness to it. It has a really nice aroma. I also use the ancho, but I prefer this. I use the ancho and the guajillo. There's so many chilies, so numerous to mention. And I'm not an expert on chilies. But I've used the ancho and the guajillo. This is what I usually use, and I really like the guajillo. So guys, let's start cooking the beans. So I wanted to get the beans going a little bit first before I make the sauce. And um, so I'm going to start out with some grapeseed oil. The recipe is always on the website. I toasted cumin seeds, fennel seeds, and coriander seeds. Smells so delicious, guys. That combination. So I toasted it and crushed it. And now I'm toasting it again in the oil. And fennel seeds are also good for gassiness. 
and bloating. This is what it looks like. It's a little bit larger than cumin seeds. It looks like cumin seeds. It's a bit larger and it's greenish. So when you're cooking beans, you should always have fennel. So I'm going to add the sprouted beans. I'm going to mix this in and I'm going to add a little bit of water and cover this and let this start cooking a little bit before I add the sauce. Now I'm going to add the episote. I'm going to add the dry episote. I couldn't find fresh ones and the dry is always more pungent so I'm adding a tablespoon. So the episote is also good for gas. So they do use it in Mexico when they cook beans for that reason. Because of the gassiness. So if you add the fennel, the episote, and you sprout your beans, chances are the beans are not going to give you much of a problem with gassiness and bloatedness and things like that. Okay? I'm going to add some water, cover this and get this cooking. So this is the guajillo chili. It's been soaking in the water. It's softened up and you see the water has taken on the color of the chili. I have one 28 ounce can of plum tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes but at this time of the year I like using the tomatoes in the can. So I have my beans here started cooking. I'm going to add the sauce. This is the guajillo chili with the liquid that it was soaked in, the 28 ounce can of tomato, and the garlic, the onions, and I added a scallion for good measure. So this is enough liquid for this to cook. To sit and simmer. This is going to simmer for an hour or more. So I like my beans to simmer and simmer and simmer and develop the flavors. So I haven't added any salt. The salt has to be added after the beans have softened because if you add salt before the beans are going to toughen up so I always add my salt when the beans have softened up so I'm gonna cover this let this simmer for an hour so I'm also going to add some oregano to this and some turmeric turmeric is not traditional in this dish but I'm going to add it because it's also medicinal. We know that turmeric is a very good anti-inflammatory. It's good for heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's. So I put it in everything. I put it in my Indian, East Indian cooking when I'm doing curries. You know, turmeric is like basic, basic in East Indian curries but you can put it in this as well. I put it in everything because it's good. It's a good anti-inflammatory. So you get your microplane and you grate it. I like the fresh turmeric or you can put turmeric powder. So 
this is going to continue to simmer and gonna see what it looks like in about an hour guys I have some millet here millet is a wonderful wonderful green it has a lot of iron in it and calcium and potassium and magnesium which is so so important for your health I used to use this a lot and then I stopped uh, my son's holistic doctor had recommended this for him when he was on the gluten-free diet and this is so so good if you're on a gluten-free diet so since I'm no longer following any specific diet I started using this again and I I don't even know why I stopped because it's, it's such a healthy healthy grain it's gluten-free and it has so many nutrients in it it's very nutrient dense so I'm gonna start doing composition dishes so you see what I put with what so when I come back I'm gonna go to the stove this is very easy to cook and I'm gonna show you how I do it so let's cook our millet I'm gonna do basic millet I like to toast my millet so I have one cup here I hope it doesn't start popping it really brings out the flavor So it's popping a little bit and it's dancing around, popping and dancing around and moving around. I don't know if you can see it. And it's getting a little bit of color as well. So I'm going to let this go for another minute and then add the water. And that's it. Add some salt some oil or you could add some vegan butter and you cover it and let it simmer going to add the water So this was one cup. I'm going to add two more cups. I'm going to add the last cup of water. I'm going to add some salt. Two teaspoons of salt. And a dash of oil. That's it. That's just basic, basic or not so basic because you're toasting. So that's it. I'm going to cover this and let this cook for about 30 minutes. It does take a while. That has cooked down. So you see the water has evaporated and this is the millet. So when I come back, I'm going to plate everything that I need. So guys, I'm back. This has been simmering for almost an hour and a half and the beans are soft. If I squeeze it along here it's see it's soft I'm going to add the salt now and this is a lot of beans it's nine cups so I'm going to put this is sea salt and it's very salty so I'm gonna put like a tablespoon and and a teaspoon And this should be good so of course you know when you're doing this it's salt to taste I added some bay leaf now bay leaf would be good if you don't have the the episote 
the bay leaf would be a good substitute so I'm going to plate this and show you what it looks like so guys here I have my composed dish I have my millet my black beans my spinach and okra I want to start doing more of this where you can see a complete dish and this is just fabulous fabulous vegan dish if you eat like this you're not gonna want to eat meat you're gonna be happy you're gonna be satisfied so this is like a Mexican Caribbean African fusion you know this is millet is something that they eat a lot in Africa and China it's a staple there so do this dish guys you're not gonna be sorry let me taste this let me put some of the beans on there with the millet mmm If you're looking for a corn flavor, the millet is just fabulous for that. And the beans is just delicious. Hmm. Hmm. This is just a great, great composition, guys. Oh, this is a bit hot. Can you let this cool? Gonna mash this up, guys. Delicious. Delicious, delicious. So, thank you for watching. Love you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends and family, guys. This is good stuff. Take care.